What led to the creation of Goggins' alter ego? Well, discipline was huge, but then we always fall back on what's, on what's comfortable to us. What's comfortable for me was, if it's easy for me, you know, I'm going to do it. And so when I was going through pet rescue training, I ran up against an obstacle that I didn't think I was going to run up, and it was the water. I fucking hated the water. And, but I tried hard to get over that. And I would go to the pool and I would try and I would try, but my mind wasn't strong enough. David Goggins, even with all the discipline, I didn't have that next fucking level. When you're truly committed to something, not like where you like, you know, I want to be a doctor, but when I run into this roadblock, I don't want to be a doctor. No, I'm going to be a doctor come hell and high water. I needed that kind of commitment. And David Goggins didn't know about that commitment. I knew how to wash a car. I knew how to clean a house. I knew how to, you know, do all these manual labor jobs. But when it came down to true suffering, to the highest of suffering, I didn't have that next level of, all right, motherfucker, we have this next level. David Goggins wasn't enough. So I went into my mental lab and realized, but I want to be great. But I don't have greatness in me. So I had to create a motherfucker that was great. And in my mind, I'm really big on visualization. And people may think it's all kind of bullshit. Believe what the fuck you want. I don't give a shit. This is a true shit right here, man. I went in my mind. I said, okay, I want to look like this. I want to feel like this. And I want to have a mind that is fucking cast iron steel. That is fucking never dull. That is always fucking sharp. That was the biggest thing I wanted. I wanted to hit obstacles that fucked most people up, including myself. But I didn't waver. I didn't fear. I didn't run away. I just stayed and marinated in the fucking fear, in the suffering. And through that, building Goggins, I will become Goggins when necessary. And I started to do these things. On my own, I had my own training ground. I built a training ground. I wasn't Navy SEALs. If you go to Navy SEAL training not prepared, you're going to quit. So I built this training ground on my own. And I started doing these horrific things that David Goggins couldn't handle. But Goggins started slowly coming up. I started putting that visualization of the guy I wanted to create. And in that water, when things got hard, and I was training on my own, Goggins would appear. Goggins would appear. When David Goggins would come up, Goggins would smack him the fuck down and say, no, motherfucker, we're going to drag you through this. And that's kind of how it happened over a period of time. This man evolved. Goggins became the guy that can withstand all kind of torture and pain and keep coming after you. And that's where that next step with uh, evolution became. And speaking of Goggins appearing when you need him, in the book, you talk about the Moab 240, uh, this 240-mile race in Utah. You talk about this elevation gain of over 31,000 feet. You're 200 miles or so into the race. And I believe this was in, uh, in, in 2020. But there was a time where I think you describe it. You went in uh, porta potty or something. David went in. Goggins came out. Yeah, man. So like I said, nothing's permanent. Nothing's permanent. That's why I'm always big on you have to keep what you want to be in the front of your mind. Because you're going to always lose it within the suffering. And suffering, people always hear me say suffering. It's not just physical, man. There's so many forms of suffering out here. It's not even funny. And most of them are not physical. Most of them are psychological. So I'm going through this race. I get to mile 200 of my second Moab. And I'm doing well. But I'm in extreme pain, man. My fucking ass is raw. My damn feet are broken. I have... Six layers of tape on my, it's just, I'm, I'm Jack, man. I have 40 miles to go. I'm having this woe is me. Why the fuck am I out here? I'm at high elevation. I can't breathe real well. Everything's wrong. So I'm with my pacer. His name is Mike. And I see this porta potty of sorts. And I'm like, I just need to get off the fucking course. So I lie to Mike. I'm like, hey, man, I got to go to the bathroom. And I go in this outdoor house there's a bathroom in it so I went in there and I'm, I'm in there and I'm, and I'm thinking I'm like god man 
I just wish I would fall into this fucking toilet. You know how like like big sinkholes? I just wish I fall in there, man, and, I, and maybe I'll break my leg or maybe something would happen where I can't finish the race. And as I'm talking to myself like this, out of nowhere, Goggins appears in my mind. He's like, man, are you really fucking talking like this, bro? Imagine if you were to fucking be able to have people hear your dialogue right now, man. You came out here in 2019 and this course kicked your ass. And all you wanted to do was come back here. You trained on fucked up knees. You put so many miles in. You visualized all this. You've, you've run this course a million times. And now you're in a fucking porter potty like a little fucking bitch whining and crying to yourself, lying to your pacer that she got a shit. So basically, what happened was Goggins got a hold of me and knifed David Goggins and stuck him in that porter potty and Goggins came out. And when Goggins came out with 40 miles to go over a 240 mile run, it was the most epic ending of any race I can remember. That last 40 miles was something that I can't even describe. But what I will tell you is, once again, it shows you what the determined mind can do. There's no David Goggins Goggins. There's just David fucking Goggins. And that's what people don't get, man. David Goggins just changed his fucking mindset in that porta potty. My feet still hurt. My back was still aching. The pack was still heavy. Everything was the same. The only thing that changed was how I approached the situation. I no longer wanted to be a victim of that race, a victim in my mind. I wanted to dominate where most people would refuse to dominate. I wanted to dominate under the most harsh environment. And that's what happened.